Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and big amount of bite-sized pieces. Today, I want to do a follow-up to a video that we did about three or four days ago. And it all has to do with the micro strategy information that they gave out at their recent seminar to all the different corporations that were actually in attendance, which was 8,000 plus of them. And the wording we need to take a look at is indefinite lived intangible asset and what that could mean for the plethora of corporations and entities that are going to be signing up to buy Bitcoin and what that will do to the market. So we'll go into that a little bit deeper. And we've actually got uh, Shehan Chandrasekara, who is a registered CPA, going to come in and explain to us why this is could be a big deal, but probably not so much. And in actuality, just to clear up some misinformation that has been put out. So we'll go over all that. But first, take a look at what's going on the market. So today it is Valentine's Day, February 14th. Congratulations, we made it. And it is high noon. And this is the prices that we got. And uh, looks like Bitcoin's doing good. 905. No, excuse me, 905. 48,000. Everybody thought it was going to break 50,000 a day. I just don't think that's actually going to happen. Uh, Ethereum was supposed to break 2,000. Still didn't do that. Uh, Tether's Tether. Nobody cares. XRP. XRP is up. And I've heard rumblings and rumors that there is a uh, settlement right around the corner with the SEC, or at least uh, going through mediation. So we'll see what happens there. Cardano's been making huge strides. Uh, they uh, signed up a contract uh, for Sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, they're doing a lot of things with the ERC-20 converter. They've gone to the, the Gogan era with their smart contracts. So they're looking pretty good. Polkadot making a massive run. Binance went. All these things are, are great. And uh, let me just take a look at the, the sentiment range real quick. Even coin. I don't know what this what that is, but apparently it could go up 25% in an hour. What the heck? Uh, if anybody has an idea about that one, that's why I, I use trade the chains. I don't know any of these things. That's why I click on this every so often to see what's going on. Tomo chain sounds like uh, tomato coin. Uh, up maybe 9% in the next hour, 6% for Quark. I've heard of Quark chain. I don't really know what's going on. Theta fuel, which makes sense because Theta is going up. Holochain, Band protocol. Band, also another one of the uh, oracles uh, on top of uh, what Chainlink has done. So that's all. Hey, look at this. Theta token could go up 5% in the next hour. I like to see that. Anyhow, that's real cool stuff. But before we get into this whole thing with Shehan and uh, the indefinite limit intangible asset, I want to take a look at my predictions that I had, uh, which was on January 7th. I did that video. Gosh, it's been uh, now. Wow. It's been over a month now, a uh, month and a week. And uh, these are the predictions that I had. And I just want to go over this real quick to see where we are actually at, because it's kind of interesting to see, you know, just how, <laughs> how, how wrong and how right I was. I mean, I like to be right, but in these predictions, I was hoping I was going to be wrong as far as like on the conservative side. And uh, I was, which is good. So Bitcoin, I said, this is on January 7th. Bitcoin's at 38K. I thought it was going to go to 150K. And now today we're at around 48.6. Is that right? 48.6? Yeah, 48.6. So yeah, we're we're making progress. Hopefully it'll happen. Uh, actually, uh, CJ over at uh, Market Rebellion, he said if we close at at uh, 45 above 45K for this month, he says 62. Uh, we'll see in uh, March. So uh, I hope so. Anyhow, Chainlink, uh, I had predict it was at $17 on January 7th. I thought it would go to 35 bucks. I'm like, eh, you know, never know. And I, I was pretty sure as far as the probability. And actually, it's 3350, but I'm pr I think we actually hit 35 already. So who knows what's going to happen with Chainlink? And again, these were very conservative numbers. So I'm happy to report that I think I'm wrong on Chainlink. If I could take a look at it again, maybe 50, maybe 60. Who knows? Sky's the limit. Uh, theta, I said it was uh, going to go to 10. And today's at 329. So, yeah, sure. Celsius, this was uh, kind of an un underperformer. Uh, on January 7th, it was six bucks. Today it's 586. So I think it's gonna go 20, but who knows? Stellar, 33 cents to 51 cents. Okay. Polka dot, far and away has been exceeding. So it was $10 on January 7th, and it's it's 27 bucks right now. I thought it was gonna go to 50, so we're halfway there. I mean, polka dot could be a hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar type of token. Who knows? Tezos, 265. I thought it was gonna go to 20 for whatever reason. And I put it now it's at 493, so not too bad. V chain, not too bad. EOS somehow has actually increased i have no idea because i don't think anybody's doing anything on that so whatever but here's the one that i was totally wrong on and it's uniswap and uh i just love what they were doing and because i mean they you know did like like a free airdrop so it was six dollars and sixty cents on january 7th today it is 21 dollars. i had the prediction of 20 bucks and i thought i was like i was like eh, halfway there so we hit the prediction uh, the probability was a little bit low and I was totally wrong. So I'm glad to say I'm wrong on this one. Uniswap could be fantastic, could be huge. If you are one of those people who are like looking to like make the big play, the gamble, the, the long shot, 
I think DeFi is your avenue. And if you just take a look at Uni Uniswap, uh, Synthetix, Aave, maybe even, even a compound, I mean, those are uh, some pretty good plays and they could pay off massively. I uh, own Aave and I think it was gonna do well and it did. It's It was 122 on January 7th. And now it was, I think it touched 500 at one point. So uh, sky's the limit for that one. But uh, I, I can't even tell you how far it could go because it, it could be exponential. Uh, Voyager was 29 cents January 7th. Now it's $3.68. So uh, I think it's going to 30. But after we did that uh, interview with uh, Steve Ehrlich, the CEO, with the uh, loyalty program, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make another uh, estimation, and it's not 30 bucks. It's uh, much much higher. Uh, Bitcoin Cash 41. Now it's 686. Okay. And XRP. Congratulations, XRP holders. Can't take it away from you guys. <laughs> it's diamond hands. So good job for there. Anyhow, uh, this is going to be a fantastic year. And uh, if you think, because you watch these videos every day or every other day or however long you watch these, and you probably think that everybody's like you, but you're not. Uh, you're not right. Everybody's different. And uh, a lot of people, you are super early at this, this place. So right now, you think like everything's blasting off, everybody knows everything. No one has any idea. They know about Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum, and that's it. So maybe around may june july you're gonna see some heavy heavy fomo going into november december uh it's gonna be it's, it's just gonna be massive so really you can do no wrong in this situation all right so let's take a look at what i was talking about as far as that intangible assets okay so this is what i want to talk about this was the bitcoin accounting treatment and tax considerations for micro strategy and they had actually given given this as a handout to everybody who attended the seminar which was February 3rd, February 3rd and 4th, February 2nd, 3rd, one of those two. And uh, I was in attendance and it was great. A lot of great information was put out. And uh, even Michael Saylor was blown away by um, the, the people who were in attendance. He said they were expecting about 1,000 corporations, but 8,000 had actually attended. And it was all about just strategies of you know how to incorporate Bitcoin onto your balance sheets. And this is just one of the many handouts that they that they gave out. But the thing that was really important with this one, I'm gonna scroll down here, let me blow this up, was these words here that kept popping up. It was called indefinite lived intangible assets. What the heck are those? Well, the AAC Master Glossary defines intangible assets as Assets not including financial assets that lack physical substance. Sounds like Bitcoin. The term intangible assets is used to refer to intangible assets other than goodwill. Cryptos are not financial assets because they are not cash. An ownership interest in an entity or a contract establishing a right or obligation to deliver or receive cash or another financial instrument. Since they lack physical substance, they are generally considered intangible assets. Other things that they, they talk about as far as intangible assets would be like a trademark or a logo or a franchise. Something that really doesn't have a substance, but you can somewhat put a monetary unit on it and say it's worth X amount. So Bitcoin would be a pretty good indication of that. And they talk about this again and again and again. I was like, I don't understand why it's so important to talk about intangible assets. And there was a there was a video that I watched from, from me, Kevin. He talked about how with intangible assets, you have some some different positives. And one of those is that you could you could put this on the balance sheet as, as far as Bitcoin. And if the price of Bitcoin goes down for whatever they bought it at, and it goes down and they have a loss, then they can claim these losses on the books without, without actually having to sell it because they are a corporation. And everybody was like, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty great. Because if you could imagine this, imagine if you could buy an asset and it doesn't matter if it really goes up or down, you could just say, well, we're just going to claim a loss, even though there's not really a loss. We just claim a loss on the books. And then, uh, uh, later on, when it goes up, then you can you know claim it as a profit. But uh, you could either way you do things, it wouldn't really matter. So when I was thinking about this, when I heard this, I'm like, wow, if I'm a corporation, I would have to buy Bitcoin because that is the ultimate hedge, right? Because you want to minimize your risk. So if you can buy something that if it goes down, you say, I have a loss, but but you don't even sell it. You claim a loss in your taxes, and then you don't have to pay so much. But then when it goes up, you're like, well, you know, those losses don't really count because it was, we never really sold. And then later on, if you wanted to sell at a massive a hundred trillion dollars or whatever else it is that, or, 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 you know, a couple billion as a profit, you could do that if you're in trouble because they were just on the books. So 
when I heard about this, I'm like, this is a this is a win win for everybody. However, it didn't make much sense to me, and uh, that is why I like to bring in people much smarter and have uh, more of the know how. And that's why I'm going to talk to uh, Sheehan right now. So Sheehan, um, I introduce him right now. He's a he's a certified CPA and uh, he specializes in crypto. So let's jump in the office real quick and listen to what he has to say as to what this all entails. Okay, okay so those are my thoughts as far as what's going to happen with uh, this this these tangible assets. So I brought on uh, Sheehan Chandrasekara. He is a registered CPA and he also specializes in crypto. So uh, as the as the uh, date approaches of April 15th, if you need help, definitely reach out to Sheehan. I will link his information in the description below. So Sheehan, what we were talking about before off camera, tell us why this could be a good thing for Tesla, or it could just be just not really that big of a deal. So let us uh, take yeah, it away. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dan. Um, I see a lot of, uh, I guess, you know, incorrect, you know, takes on this going on on the social media. So it's it's better that you know, uh, you know, we, we talk about this right now. I think before we talk about the specific, I want you guys to understand that uh, if you're a big corporation, you have to maintain your financial statements under GAAP, meaning generally accepted accounting principles. Your tax return and the amount of tax that you pay is not based on that accounting method. Your tax return is prepared based on tax accounting method. Uh, so that's something to note. So that's two ways to keep books. And again, this is this is how things have been done done for like you know decades. Okay. Um, so in the case of Tesla, um, you know they bought you know cryptocurrency, you know one point five billion in Bitcoin. Um, the way that they are being treated under GAAP is that every financial quarter or every reporting period, their internal team would evaluate uh, for impairment. In simple terms, what that means is they would check if the, the cost basis of the, uh, the coin uh, has exceeded the market value at the time of that reporting date. If that's the case, they would recognize that loss for book purposes, not for tax purposes, because this is where a lot of people get wrong. They're like, okay, Tesla gets a write off this loss, but we don't get to do it. That's so unfair. It's like corporate America, Elon Musk is evil. That's not the case. <laughs> you get to write it off for book purposes because they want to maintain the financial statements in a very, very conservative way, meaning they don't want to inflate the numbers on the financials. They want to, they, because being conservative is one of the fundamental principles when preparing your financial statements. Now, say that. Tesla wrote off, you know, let's say, for example, a million bucks, let's say a billion bucks uh, in your books. It does not mean that for tax purposes, they get to write that off. For tax purposes, impairment losses that you recognize for book purposes are not deductible. So for tax purposes, they only see a taxable event only when they sell or trade that cryptocurrency, just like, uh, you know, individuals. Gotcha. So when we're talking about uh, the quarterly earnings reports, and we could see, like, let's say that the cost of Bitcoin goes down and then Tesla says, OK, well, the cost has gone down. So we're going to show this on the books. Is that what they're talking about as far as like what people look at the quarterly earning reports and go, oh, well, they lost X amount, one billion because Bitcoin went down. But in reality, on, and, and, and like you said, in reality, there is the, there is the book counterpart and then there is the actual taxes with the IRS revenue. So they could show it over here. But in reality, what they're actually showing to the government is this. Is that correct or am I not right? Uh, I mean, so both of those, you know, accounting methods do get reported to the government, right? Because SEC right. is a government arm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. So, I mean, again, I don't know how often they do the impairment. You know, it's in, it should be in their details. I mean, it could be usually every six months or every year. So, yeah, I mean, if the, uh, if the market value has gone down mm -hmm. compared to how much they paid for the Bitcoin uh, on the financial statement that's getting reported to the SEC, that's going to have impairment loss on the income statement. Again, it doesn't it doesn't give you give them any benefit. I mean, I mean, it's actually bad for them realistically because that's going to reduce their income, uh, and then technically that should affect their valuation. But you guys know about Tesla valuation; it has nothing to do with the fundamental. It's all about the future and then the, or the narrative that Elon Musk is bringing. So, uh, but again, just to clarify, that loss is not deductible on the tax returns. Tax returns are based on a different set of uh, accounting rules. Yeah, because one of the things that people were talking about uh, was, well, if this actually happens, and they say, okay, well, there is there is this this loss on the books, 
that it would maybe show in like this uh, in this earnings revenue report. And then people could say, oh, well, they, you know, the, the example was they made 369 million last quarter. And, it, and then if their cost of Bitcoin goes down 300 million, then 300 million minus 369, they'd only, it would only look like they made 69 million. And then the uh, investors would freak out, drop the stock, it would go down, even though that's not the case. That was, I, I, I think, the, the big issue because people were saying just if that happens, be aware that Tesla is still a strong company. But this actually happened, but it didn't happen. But what you're saying is, would that happen? I mean, it could have some type of impact on the on the price of stocks uh, sure. because if you know if tech, if Tesla technically reports like a net loss, uh, like every quarter, because say that we are getting into a bear market, then yeah, sure. I mean, that would have an impact on the stocks. But that only if you look at the stocks on the surface, you know, without getting into the details, because mm. like we shouldn't discount tesla for bitcoin going you know down in price because tesla is not in the business of you know running an investment fund and and test you know, test they just have it on the balance sheet as a hedge and in the next 10 20 years that you know 1.5 billion dollars worth of bitcoin could bring in you know so much revenue maybe even more than uh you know tesla itself you know selling the cars so uh i think what i would encourage you guys to do is you know having that bitcoin and the ba balance sheet is, is good uh, but there are so much complicated accounting treatments that they need to follow because they're SEC, uh, you know, uh, the public right. traded company. So what you see on the net income is not necessarily uh, what you think it is. Right. Yeah. And that makes uh, that makes total sense. So hopefully as uh, as time goes on, I don't think because the average buying price that they got it at was a, a whopping 16000 so if it goes below 16,000, then we could see something, but I don't think that's happening. I think in my personal predictions, it's going to hit, it's going to peak at 150 K. That's my conservative view. And then it might drop back down to 30 K. So I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. All right. Sheehan, uh, where can we find you at? Um, I think Twitter at, uh, their group at CPA. I'm pretty active there. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, happy to answer. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Okay, so that's it. So for Sheehan, I want to say thanks again for him to come on and take the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, he's got a very simple designed uh, site, and I'm going to link that in the description below. It's going to talk, talk about all about what he does, crypto tax, prep, crypto tax preparation, consultation, the whole whole shebang, and you can reach out to him. We've had a number of people on the uh, channel reach out to him. They, they just they love him. They, they think he's great in the services that he provides. So definitely take a look out for that. Now, also, if you are just an individual, you know, retail investor, you know, like myself, or you're a small business owner, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's also uh, what I use, CryptoTrader.tax. And right now, if you, I will link this in the description also. If you put in your first name and email, they do a weekly drawing where they give an unlimited tax report, $300 value, pretty good. Uh, I'm actually, I used them last year and they were fantastic. From the time that I signed up, got everything done, took me 30 minutes, they saved me $16,000. So if you want to equate time to money, these guys saved me a massive amount and I'm using them again. I'm actually doing it this weekend uh, to get everything together and sh ship on over to my accountant. The only problem I'm having is uh, actually access to Coinbase. So that's what's uh, de derailing me. Other than that, it's super simple. It's got an API integration, super simple. Um, there's a link below. I actually show you how to use uh, CryptoTrader.tax and uh, there's, a, there's a small little video, so check that out. Anyhow, so that is it for today. So uh, if you watch till the end, first of all, thanks, I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing because uh, a lot of things we talk about are pretty time sensitive, so it helps out the channel. So do that, I would appreciate it. Also, if you like these videos, gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right, let YouTube do its magic, and that is it for today. Thanks so much, see you on the next one.